Hey Nesters, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing with you part two of my church rummage sale haul. I, in my last haul, I showed most of the brick brac stuff I picked up and the rest of the stuff is books, uh, some purses, some linens, and a few things that uh, my kids got. So I guess I'll just share that stuff with you. I did get this cool magnet here. I think she charged me 25 cents. Uh, it is vintage enough. It's from 1997, it says on the back. And it says plant DMF Fairy Co's standard seed. So it's like a kind of like a seed packet or some kind of country magnet. And I think, you know, it's hard to come by good magnet. So I thought that was a nice find. And I, I might resell that. I don't know how much I can really get for it online. So it might just be a booth item. Uh, if you didn't see my last video, I will link it below. I did pick up 39 items total and my total price was $31.50. Uh, a lot of this stuff that I'm going to show you wasn't marked. The brick and brack stuff was, you know, most of it had prices on it. This stuff wasn't, but I kind of have a general idea of what they might have charged for it. So I'll try to, you know, remember as I go. I did look in the book section there and I got a few here. I like to look at the cookbooks and try to find older ones or, you know, interesting ones. This one here is a Yankee Magazine's Great New England Food Festival recipes. So I thought that was pretty interesting. I did see, you know, one from Maine in here when I did a quick flip through the Union Fair in Maine. And it just has a lot of, you know, cool recipes like that in it. And yeah, so I, I'm just a nerd. I like this kind of stuff. I know it bores some of you, but I got that one. This one here is a uh, recipe for happiness. A mini cookbook and this is actually put out by uh, how do you pronounce your last name Mary Engelbright she makes a lot of well she makes images like this right she's an artist and I find her imagery on like tins a lot so yeah I was happy to get this she's a very classic country you know style to her not the farmhouse country as much as a almost a French country I think maybe is what the design would be but this is a really cute, seemed to be a really cute cookbook as well. It's just like a little pamphlet. So I was happy to pick that up. And I think, I want to say the soft ones were 25 cents and the hard covers were 50 cents. I think that's the price for these. Uh, this one, okay, so these are similar. I thought it was the same one I just showed. So this is a Yankee Country Fair cookbook. The other one was the food festival recipes. So I didn't realize that was kind of a set there, but it's the same idea. And you know, just some nice recipes inside. So yeah, I was happy to get that. I like the little mini cookbooks. They gotta be full of good recipes if they only did a few, right? And then this one here is Craig Claiborne's Kitchen Primer, uh, a basic cookbook. So this was from 1969. I did look it up when I was uh, shopping there, so I remember that. I I guessed the 1960s, so I was pretty happy with myself <laughs> there. But uh, this one's interesting to see cookbooks like this that reads almost more like a chapter book. So uh, I don't come across those too often, so I thought that was kind of interesting there. So I think that one was 25 cents. And then I got this one, Bake Your Own Bread. And uh, yeah, again, it's like a chapter style one. Uh, and I think that'll be an interesting read. I did get a book, uh, like a beginner's bread making book for, was it Christmas or my birthday? One or the other. And uh, I haven't tried it yet. I've been so busy, but I, I'm really interested in making bread. So yeah, I think this one would be interesting to read either, you know, before or after that one, probably after because I will likely go with a more modern one first, but it'll be interesting, you know, after I have the knowledge from the other book to go ahead and read that and see how, you know, it compares the old fashioned tips might, uh, you know, pair better with um, my style of learning. I'm not really sure. Now this book here, I, I wasn't sure if I had it yet. I, I know I picked up a book, Gretchen Rubin, she wrote another book uh, I can't remember what it was called, but I think that's the one I picked up and this one's called The Happiness Project, which I think was the first one, the first big one that she wrote. And I don't believe I uh, had this one yet. I at least know I didn't get a chance to read it yet. So I grabbed it. It was, I think it was 25 cents. So yeah, I was going to pick it up for that price. And uh, 
Let me see, should I read a synopsis for you here if you guys are unfamiliar with it? It's likely like a self-help kind of book, which is what I ten tend to gravitate towards. Um, I don't really see one, so we'll just skip that. <laughs> I'm sure you can find one on Amazon, right? And then I found a, I guess this is a bread machine book. So I know there's a lot of purists that make bread that just say they, they prefer using their hands and just, you know, doing it that way that they don't, they don't like to use bread machines. But I figured when push comes to shove, if I really, you know, suck <laughs> at making bread by hand, maybe I can always get a bread machine and try it that way. So yeah, I thought this seemed to be pretty nice and I like that it had the pictures in it. So yeah, I got those and she potentially probably charged me 50 cents for this one. It's it's kind of a hard cover, but it's really floppy. So I don't know what she would have considered that as. So I did end up picking up three different purses. They had their bags marked at a dollar a piece and I found a few that seemed kind of interesting. To me, I am going to resell these and they actually all seem to be brand new, never used. They still have paper inside of them. I don't know if someone would have, you know, bought them and just stuffed paper in it to store it that way, but uh, they appear to be brand new. This one here, I don't think any of them are really labeled. I see K, K and R, I think, on the zipper. That might just be the zipper brand, but I don't see any labels on what, you know, type of purse it might be. I think it says K and K. I can see it on the outside zipper, but these seem to be in really excellent shape, and I thought the yellow one would be really fun for the summer, so I got that one there. And then this one I picked up. I just thought it had a really nice design to it, this wildlife, you know, design. And potentially, I was gonna say it's potentially handmade, but I don't know, the leather, do people, I don't know if people can hand make it with leather that well. Yeah, it's probably a manufactured one. The zipper is YKK and again, I don't see anything that indicates what brand, you know, it might be. Um, there's nothing, no tags that I can see in it. But again, this one was stuffed with the paper, so I don't think it was used. And it seemed to be in pretty good shape, so I definitely thought it was worth, you know, picking up for a dollar. It has a little bird on that side, and it kind of has a tiger, like, backside there, and then the tiger's head's, like, kind of upside down this way, so I'm not quite sure, you know, what they're thinking behind that was, but <laughs> it looks cool. So I grabbed that one. And the last one I got kind of reminds me of the Vera Bradley purses there. It's not Vera Bradley as far as I know. I don't see any labels on this one as well, but it does have a snap closure here. And again, this one I don't think was ever used. It has two pockets there and then it has a uh, zipper. It's hard to show you <laughs> a zipper on the inside on this side as well as a back pocket there and a front pocket and yeah I think that's it but I thought this was pretty I really like the colors of it I really like how this blue and pink looks together and I think that's a very vintage you know inspired uh, look with those colors mixed together so I think this would be really nice for someone this summer as well so yeah I was gonna pick up those three purses you know the price was right and I thought they were pretty interesting and then I looked through the linen section they had a lot of gorgeous crocheted blankets there and I might have picked them up I didn't know how much they were gonna charge for me was half of the problem so you know nothing was really priced and they just kind of priced the things as you went up to the register just like oh it's this much and they didn't really ask you if you, you know wanted it like I mean I don't I'm not gonna pay like 10 bucks for a blanket you know so I I didn't really get them but I did grab a few of these and figured it was worth the shot I didn't want to you know carry the heavy blanket around but I figured I could try these and those are easy enough to be like uh no <laughs> so I got this stuff here I like anything to do with the United States and so I I was gonna pick this up. I, I'm not sure what they charged me for it, probably 50 cents a dollar or something like that, but it has the state of Texas on it and I thought that was pretty nice there. So I got that for me. And then I picked up a couple of, what would you call these? Like cloth napkins, I guess, to resell. And I really liked that they were white and then they had this really pretty lace detailing around the edge here. I 
I thought I looked them over pretty well. It seems there's a little bit of a yellow stain there. Do you guys have any good way to get this out without just like, you know, obviously bleach maybe, but I'm afraid the bleach would eat away because it's such a, you know, delicate material. It's not overly thin, but it's thin enough that I'm worried that might happen. So yeah, if you guys have a good way of getting that out, maybe OxyClean, does that? Yeah, I've never used OxyClean, but I think that works as well. Maybe I'll try that. But yeah, I got those two there. I thought they were really pretty and in decent shape, right? And then this one here, I don't know if it's vintage or handmade or what's going on with it, but it definitely has that vintage look to it. It is quite wide here. So it's this really nice, I guess, hand towel it would be. And it has this, uh, I guess it's an apple. Would you say that's an apple there? It's just a white apple, I guess. And it has this really pretty, oh, like ribbon detailing around it. And I thought it was, I just thought it was really nice. It definitely has a vintage vibe to it. I potentially might just hang on to it myself. Like, I don't know. Like I said, I didn't see any labels on it and I can't tell if it was handmade or not. It, I think it might have been handmade. So like, I don't really know the age of it, so I don't know what to do with it, but I, I think I'm gonna just hang on to it myself because I do enjoy it. And then I picked up an apron. Um, I just really like the little Dutch, you know, Pennsylvania Dutch couple on here. And that's mainly why I wanted it. It's a little on the thin side, which I don't know if I care for that too much. And I'm always annoyed when people that sell things have these tags, right? The little plastic tags and things because they always put holes in the material and you're always gonna have this little pinhole there. It ruins things. I wish people would find a different way to tag things like this. You know, loop it around or something, I don't know. <laughs> but it has this really nice large pocket on the front here. And there was a couple stains on it. Again, probably tried the OxyClean, right, I guess. And it does have some detailing on the bottom there. So I was, I was gonna grab that. I think she charged me a dollar for that. I do remember that one. And then the blanket, I think she only charged me a dollar for as well. I couldn't leave this behind. I, I haven't been able to thoroughly look it over, but it seemed to be in pretty good overall shape. And I'm pretty sure it's handmade. I'll show you what it looks like here. <laughs> I don't know how well you guys can see that, but it's just so cute. Let's see, you see the raccoon and the bunny? And then has the strawberries around it and the blue checkered plaid there. And then on the back side, it has like a strawberry fabric. So adorable. <laughs> I couldn't leave this behind. I'm pretty sure someone handmade this probably in the 1960s or 70s. And yeah, super cute. I, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet. I really, really do quite like it, but uh, I potentially might resell it. I gotta look it over first and see, you know, make sure it's in great condition. But yeah, I was happy to get that. Now my husband spied this poker chip set. I'm not familiar with anything like that. They had two bucks on it. He thought we could do good reselling it. Uh, they aren't marked. Like he said, maybe usually they have some kind of a mark here. So that's probably nice. You don't, you know, it's nice and minimalist. You don't have to deal with some logo. And they're really neat actually. They have dice like around the side of it. And yeah, I just think they're really nice as well. I'm not sure what the going rate for these are, but it's something we're gonna look into. And yeah, probably definitely worth the two bucks, right? So it potentially might end up going in the booth if it's not worth that much, but it was definitely, you know, I think it was a fun find. And I like when my husband chimes in and is like, hey, we should try to resell this. So that's always fun. Now they had a ton of clothing there and they had a few, like in the middle section, they had probably like 10 racks you know, with them hung up nicely, and then they just had tables of piled up clothes. I mean, they were just heaps, and I I can't deal with that. Like, it's very complicated to shop that way for me. Just like, you know, yanking things out. I don't really have time for that, so I, 
I try to glance through it because I was looking for uh, clothes for my boys. I do buy most of their clothes reused, um, reused, <laughs> used in uh, you know secondhand at thrift stores, but mostly yard sales. Little boy clothes, let me tell you, they're so hard to find. Even new in store, the boy sections like this and the girl sections like this, right? So I have two boys, and so I do, you know, always try to find clothing for them in the yard sales and. Yeah, they didn't really have anything there today, but I did pick up this shirt here for me. Just a nice blue flannel here, and I I almost want to say it's, no, it's not Hollister, it's S.O. It has a, like a Hollister feel to it though, and the tag almost looks like Hollister, but S.O., is that, that's probably Walmart, isn't it? I don't know who makes that company, but... Uh, who makes that company, yeah, what store that company is at, but I really like that shirt anyways. And then I did pick up one thing to try to resell because um, they had a section and they marked boutique items, so I guess they thought it was, you know, fancier stuff, so I looked through that. And this is actually a Ralph, I, I don't know if you say Loren or Lauren, I think it's Loren, but they marked it $4 and it's actually, insulated right so that intrigued me and it had the hood to it which I thought was really nice and then it's it's completely red which you know someone might be into that color more than me but uh, yeah it's got a nice little zip up here and it is a vest so vests like this and as insulated as this is a super nice to wear outside in the fall time especially you don't want to wear like a big bulky coat but you know you want to keep your core warm so I thought this is really nice overall anyways I need to look it up. I'm not, you know, I don't resell clothing. <laughs> so it's something I'm sort of interested in trying to get into a little bit. I mostly, if I do it, I think I like to look at the dresses myself. I really think I'm going to resell dresses, kind of make that my main focus. And then maybe stuff like this, you know, that like outdoorsy stuff, I like that. So maybe some sports stuff, I don't know. But yeah, it's mostly what I would get into. I don't wanna just, um, you know pick up any random thing so yeah I got those so these two items my husband picked up my sons like spider-man so we just grabbed this guy and yeah so we got him <laughs> they don't even really like stuffed animals so hopefully they enjoy that uh, since it's spider-man but my husband actually grabbed this we recently saw this movie Paddington Bear probably, have, I don't know, maybe like three months ago. It's such a good movie. If you guys have not seen that, watch it. The beginning is a little slow because it starts out in this like black and white scene where the uh, like explorers discovered these bears could talk, you know, to humans. And then, you know, once you get past that, it's really good. And this actually has the little tag on it from just like in the movie where he had, uh, was it say, please look after this bear, thank you. He, he was wearing this little tag that his grandmother had put on him uh, when he got to the train station in New York, I think is where he ended up, but super cute. This has a tag, it says it's from 2001, and I, I'm gonna look into this to see what they might sell for, because I, like I said, my kids don't really play with stuffed animals, but I wanted to get it too. My husband spied it, and he knew we really enjoyed that movie, so, you know, we'll potentially keep it unless it's, you know, worth some kind of money, but yeah, I thought he was really nice to pick up. And yeah, so I think that's gonna do it for today, guys. I am going to share with you the next rummage sale I went to this day as well. It was at a Kiwanis charity, you know, club event. They were building a, you know, raising money to build a playground for kids in our area. So I spent, I think, $17 at that one. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. And we'll catch you in the next one. Bye.